Hello friends. I wanted to talk today about the experience of feeling unsettled. The other day I woke up and my stomach just felt off. And I sat with that feeling and that wondering and that personal check-in and the word that rose up in response was, I feel unsettled. Then later that day, I heard this word discombobulated and I thought, oh, now, now there's a word that describes it as well, discombobulated. And then this morning, I was watching the news on CTV and Marcy McMillan just was announcing that she was going to name the number who had died from COVID. And she took the deepest sigh before she named the numbers. And, and my heart weighed in with her heart as I heard the overwhelm and I heard the unsettling experience it was for her to name that number. We're in unsettling times. Often I say to the bereaved, grief can feel like there's an earthquake going on and it's a constant earthquake because the foundation of everything that we've known is shifting it's moving and that can feel overwhelming and unsettling and anxious you know anxiety ridden and so I think this is a time that is literally leaving us feeling like there's an earthquake going on we've never ever experienced this kind of worldwide experience it's unsettling and so I think it's so important for us to honor that and to find ways to move through it and take care of ourselves. First, I think most and foremost is we do some personal check-ins, right? That, that we literally check in. Maybe it's once a day, maybe it's every hour, maybe every few minutes. And we say, how am I doing? What, what am I feeling? What's my response right now? And, and then find word that really names it. You'll know because you'll just go, yeah, that's it. And sit with it, honor it, give it the attention it needs. And then ask yourself, what do I need right now that might help me deal with this feeling? So in that moment, when I was feeling unsettled, I asked myself what I thought I needed. And immediately I felt drawn to the back door. I opened it up and I just breathed in the fresh air. And it was unbelievable. I felt like that air was just infusing into every cell of my body and I felt every cell respond with this sigh of relief. And then I heard the birds and it was all of a sudden it became a mindful moment. So I was activating all of my senses to that moment, the sight, the sound, the smell, the taste, the touch. And in that mindful moment, I felt a calming effect. And so I want to encourage you that you consider what are things that help you settle down when you're feeling the activation of feeling unsettled. And each of us is different. And so there's no one prescription. It's to, to really recognize what serves me well. So I know nature serves me well. I know myself that. And so I headed out into nature. I'm so grateful I have that opportunity that I can walk right out into a walking path and I activated all of my senses. And by the time I got back home, my stomach had settled and I felt calm and I felt able to enter into my day in a new way. But there's so many ways you can do that. It could be music. I have found music that is calming helps me when I feel unsettled. Music that is dance music helps me to lift my spirits. Everybody's different, so maybe it's music. Maybe it's um, exercise. For some people, they find it calming to have the rhythm of walk or on a treadmill running or, or doing their yoga. Um, that can feel settling. For some, it might be creative. I found myself really exercising my creativity. And I've been told that the action of going left to right, of doing something, is actually a calming, rhythmic activity that serves us well. And so I knit, so that back and forth of knitting 
Some people draw and they color and the back and forth of that. Maybe it's sanding, the back and forth of sanding, but something that's rhythmic like that can really serve well. Creativity serves our attention and, and our brain and our body well. And, and maybe I had one person share with me that they're watching um, online an eagle with their little eaglets and it's just inspiring and uplifting and calming. And so without being right out in nature, they have a bird's eye view, literally, of that. You know, maybe another thing would be doing something for someone else. There is a fulfillment when we do something. So do one thing for someone else. It could be as little as a phone call, a text. Um, there's so many, so many ways we can do something for another, even with physical distancing. It's very possible. So it's knowing yourself enough to, number one, check in, and then honor, and then ask what serves me and what I'm going through right now. I've also found planting. I had some potting soil, I planted a few seeds, and it just makes my heart sing when I see those seeds growing. So what will you do? I ask you, check in, name it, honor it, spend time with it, and then consider what would serve me well. I'd like to close by reading from John O'Donoghue. It's a beautiful blessing, and his words are just perfect for this thought. Take refuge in your senses. Open up to all the small miracles you rush through normally. Become inclined to watch the way of the rain when it falls slow and free. Imitate the habit of twilight, taking time to open the well of color that fostered the brightness of day. Draw alongside the silence of stone until its calmness can claim you. Be excessively gentle with yourself. Stay clear of those vexed in spirit. Learn to linger around someone of ease who feels they have all the time in the world. Gradually, you will return to yourself, having learned a new respect for your heart and the joy that dwells far within slow time. Friends, please be gentle and patient and kind to yourself and know that we are getting through this. Peace to each of you.